Hi, it's Dave Robinson with PlantCoverCrops.com in the same field that I just called a disaster a few moments ago as I start walking up uh, the hillsides and, and uh, looking in other areas. I'm finding we have a very good stand of annual ryegrass and crimson clover uh, out here. Um, this is on a knoll and what we're finding is uh, in the areas where we had uh, a little bit of stress, so the soybeans were not as strong this past year. We also have less corn fodder from the previous year. Uh, on the knolls, we've got a very beautiful stand of cover crops. In the lower areas, uh, where the beans would have stayed green longer, um, and we also have a little more fodder there from uh, previous year's corn. We don't have quite as good a stand, but as I pan across here, We've actually got quite a bit of green out here from where the uh, cover crops were, were flown on. Um, I think that the key here again is the timing of application is the biggest key. We just cannot fly into green corn and green soybeans uh, unless we know it's going to stay extremely dry until the corn and soybeans are dry enough to uh, uh, that get enough sunlight down in there but we certainly have had uh, several issues and we've seen it again here in Wisconsin where uh, if it's flown into green corn or into green soybeans we have a much reduced stand uh, where we had uh, more sunlight uh, like in this area right here where the beans were not as strong uh, we've got a beautiful beautiful stand and where the beans were extremely strong and last year's corn was extremely strong meaning the plants were much healthier longer we don't have as good a stand. So that sunlight getting down to the ground um, is very key. So timing is very important. Again, Dave Robinson from plantcovercrops.com looking at what I thought was a disaster and now thinking, you know what? It actually looks pretty decent here in central Wisconsin, November 15th, 2012.